Welcome to episode 89 of the Woolly Thistle podcast, coming to you from the gorgeous state of New Hampshire. Today is Friday, January 19th, 2019, and I'm your host, Corrine. This is our first podcast of 2019, and there's so much to share with you. But first, a word from our sponsor. The Woolly Thistle brings your favorite yarns from the UK and Europe and makes them easily accessible in North America. At thewoollythistle.com, you will find the best of British yarns, such as Blacker Yarns, Uist Wool, and Jameson and Smith, to name a few. You will also find yarns from Scandinavia, including Ul Centrum, Plotolopi, Rama, and Tuku Wool. At The Woolly Thistle, we encourage woolly wonderlust, and we share information about where the wool was grown and milled. We specialize in finding yarn made at the source, whether that be on wild Scottish islands or in the Devon countryside, or even in the mountains of Portugal, we find it and share it with you. With excellent customer service and beautiful yarns to peruse, you will love shopping at thewoollythistle.com. And remember, there's two L's in woolly. So let the woolly thistle do the international shipping so you don't have to. Thank you, listeners. If you're returning for another episode, I really appreciate you coming back. And if you're new to the podcast, and I know there are some newbies out there, you're very welcome, and I hope you enjoy the show. Ah, oh, so it's 2019 and um, I wasn't able to get a podcast out right at the end of last year, but that's okay. I hope you had a wonderful holiday if you were celebrating and um, I hope your winter is going okay. This is definitely really becoming my most favorite time of the year because we have to knit. I mean, the weather just demands it, at least up here in uh, the Northern Hemisphere where it's winter time. Yeah, so I hope you had a good holiday and that you are trucking along in January. It feels like, well, we're just going at the same old pace. We're just running along here, very busy and uh, lots of happenings here at the Woolly Thistle. But first of all, let me just tell you, I'm recording this today uh, from my kitchen. It is freezing outside. Uh, The chickens are cooped up in their coop and the cat is not allowed out. The kids are not allowed out. We're all inside. You might hear my fire crackling once in a while. I've got a wood stove just to my left. And I've also got a crock pot bubbling away full of minestrone soup right across from me. It smells really good. Um, You might hear from my voice that I have been uh, having a cold and I'm on the better side of that now, but it is still lingering. So I will do my best to tell you all the news at the Woolly Thistle without sounding too bunged up. (laughs) So I suppose the biggest news of the year so far at the Woolly Thistle is that I moved the shop. I used to uh, work right out of my home. We had a big room over our garage and also we had a sunroom that I took over. I was quite happy working up there. It was getting more and more filled though and we were having less and less room to work and walk around and do what we needed to do. And also um, I have got... Uh, three people now working for me part-time and they pack your orders for the most part. So it was starting to get really cramped up there. So I started looking at the end of the year for somewhere that I could move to and I found space in the old woolen mill that's been refurbished and there's lots of businesses in there. It's not a retail space, it's more a commercial space. So there's lots of you know, service type businesses, the oil companies there. There's lots of uh, offices from the local hospital situated there, stuff like that. And then I'm there now too. And I have about 1100 square feet, which is more than I had here at home. 
but we seem to have um, burst out of our seams and are filling that space already. It's quite unbelievable. But we did move. It was supposed to be a one day move. It took two days. And if you follow on Instagram, you'll you'll know of all that drama. Um, the moving truck went off the road on its way here. And then we had to wait a couple hours for them to come and sand our driveway because it was just too icy that day and we'd had snow. And then when they finally did get to the house here, they took one look and said, we can't do all this in one day. There's too much stuff. So the first day they moved all the yarn. And the second day they came back and moved all the furniture. (laughs) So we moved in on the Thursday and the Friday. And uh, ever since then, we have been trying to get organized. And the first thing to do was to get the yarn organized. And we did that very quickly and the packing station so that we could continue to get orders out. And so hopefully you haven't noticed too much of a disturbance in getting your orders. Uh, There was a slight delay throughout the move, but nothing too bad really. And we are back to functioning normally in terms of getting orders out. We have a new addition in the shop too. We have an operations assistant who is working with me and she works on the vendor side of things, making sure that the inventory is up and that you know when we need to place orders uh, she's doing that and she's managing the yarn coming in for those orders and receiving them and getting them up on the shelves so i'm really working quite hard to get the infrastructure of the shop set up so that it's not so reliant on me doing the daily work that's required to keep the shop going and what i'm focusing on or we'll be focusing more on soon is growing the shop and managing the marketing side as well as overseeing all the logistics. I hope to do lots of collaborations. I hope to look into doing some events and just, you know, looking at ways that the shop can grow and continue on the path that we've started here. So it's exciting times. It's all consuming as always. Yeah, we have lots of exciting things coming up that I know you'll want to hear about. So let's get started, shall we? This episode includes Off the Needles, On the Needles, What's Up Next, Cal News, The Woolly Thistle Update, we have a little cast, and then we'll wrap it up. So Off the Needles, I've been racking my brains. I don't think there's anything Off the Needles, which seems to be the general state of affairs around here these days. So nothing off the needles, but still got good stuff going on the needles. My Aito shawl by Melody Hoffman, Be Mandarins. Uh, This was the shawl that we knit together in the Aito shawl cal that ended on December 27th. And this was a lovely, very laid back cal where we were knitting with our Plutolope. And I think many of you did finish it. I know that Maggie is working to get hers finished. Mine has been set aside. I will admit that but I I know that I'll get back to it. Um, So thank you if you knit along with us. I hope you enjoyed knitting with the Plotolope and that that you would feel much more comfortable now knitting with it in a garment, say, doing a rusty cardigan, something like that. And I think now, for those of you who've knitted with Plotolope, there should be no fear of that yarn breaking and then putting it back together. We're sticking with it. So that that was a lot of fun and it was very laid back, which is just what you need uh, in the month of December, I would say. And then um, I'm working very much monogamously on my star cardigan, which was designed for me by Donna Kay, just lovely. I would love to speak to Donna. She seems to be a bit of a fairy godmother who comes in and goes out and you don't hear from her. She designed this pattern for me after I put a plea out on Instagram to help me find this particular cardigan to knit that I had seen in a shop. And many of you offered really good suggestions uh, for patterns, but then Donna, who is a designer here in New Hampshire, emailed me and said, I can write that up for you, no problem. And she took a few measurements of me and uh, presented me with this very concise pattern that I have been enjoying to the nth degree knitting. And last time we spoke, I think I was working on my second sleeve. I blocked the first sleeve before I finished the second sleeve. Oh, and the yarn. Well, let me tell you, I'm knitting it with Jameson and Smith two ply. And the gray is the 27 color and it's a medium gray. And I'm knitting that right off the cone that I had in my own stash. And then the black is number 81 and I'm knitting that using the balls. 
And so while they're the same yarn, the cone is still in the grease and has a different feel to it than the ball that has been washed and reballed. But I don't find that a problem at all. And after blocking, oh, the fabric that was created was just beautiful, just really lovely. The gray bloomed, you know, and it had a lot of blooming to do because it was in that grease, but it's gorgeous and it fits, the sleeve fits. So I finished the second sleeve. I haven't blocked it yet. I like looking at the two before and after blocking for now. And then I cast on the body and it's knitted in the round from the bottom up. And I just recently uh, started the armhole shaping and now I've created the steaks for the armholes and I'm knitting in the round still. And I think I'll be doing that all the way up to the neck with these steaks, which is just so clever. So right now I have three steaks. I have one up the middle and then one for each arm. The pattern I requested have set in sleeves instead of drop shoulder. And so she designed it for that. And that will take a little practice on my part. I have not sewn in sleeves before, but I used to sew a lot way, 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 way back. And I, I know the general geometry of trying to fit a sleeve into an armhole and how to do it. I can do it with fabric. So I'm, I'm assuming that it's going to be similar and a little bit of uh, jimmying around, but the fabric will be um, flexible. So I'm not too afraid of that. I just hope that I can get it nice and neat and I'll, I'll do some practice stitching. I wonder, do you still use mattress stitch when you're going round a curve? Probably. So anyway, I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm loving how this star cardigan is coming out though. When I got to under my arms, just before starting the armhole shaping, I put the whole thing on waist yarn and tried the tube on, or as I would say the tube on, and it fit. I was absolutely thrilled because you know me and fit. It wasn't too big, it's not too tight, <laughs> it's going to fit. And I just can't wait to wear it. I think this is going to be my Edinburgh cardigan because I'm going to Edinburgh Yarn Festival in March again, which I'm very excited about. This time I've managed to sneak in a visit with my sister. So she's coming down to Edinburgh one of the days and we're gonna take off and tootle around together. I don't know the last time I had time with my sister without kids or husbands or anything. It's been decades probably. <laughs> so we're really looking forward to that. But I'm traveling again with Sarah of Fiber Trek and um, very much looking forward to her. We're, we are good travel buddies, <laughs> even though I keep trying to get us all lost and mixed up. Yeah, we do okay, we have a good time. So yeah, that's to look forward to, but this will be my Edinburgh cardigan, I'm hoping. I don't see any problem with finishing that relatively soon. I think I cast it on, well, I'm trying to think. Donna was working on the pattern over Thanksgiving break, so, I probably had it shortly after that, maybe the week after that. So let's say the last week of November and we're into the middle of January. And actually, by the time you hear this, who knows, it could be finished. I am absolutely dedicated to getting this done. Also, you know, it's an all over color work pattern. And, you know, I'm used to doing mittens. I'm used to doing yokes. But to do something that is completely color work, I was a little wary of that, but I was up for it. And I'm knitting it two-handed, so dominant color in my left and background color in my right. And of course, being the background color, that's the one you end up doing the most stitches with. And of course, being my right hand, for me, that's the slower side. That's the old English style of knitting. But that's fine. I don't mind it at all. It, it's slower than just doing continental for sure. And I have from time to time switched over to having both strands on my left. And I think that is quicker, but I'm not as good with carrying the strands loose enough behind the stitches. And I worry that my tension tightens up when I'm doing both colors on the left. So, you know, from time to time, I give that a wee go. Maybe what I need to do during the mitten cal is um, knit my mittens with both strands on the left, because that's how I learned to knit continental in the first place. Maybe some of you old fogies have been listening for a while. Remember, I knit a pair of mittens, Continental, and that was the project that I chose to knit this new way to me. I, I was an English knitter all before that. 
And um, mittens are a great small enough project that you knit enough to learn and master the new way of doing it. But it's not so big that you're, you know, you're committing to something that just seems too high a mountain. So maybe I'll do that with my mittens. My next mitten cast on is uh, have both strands be on the left because I would prefer to knit all continental with my color work. But this is not the project to do that with. So anyway, all that to say, knitting color work all over at this point, it doesn't faze me at all. It's just what I have to do. And I absolutely love how it's uh, knitting up. Um, my friend Maggie, for Christmas, uh, amongst the lovely gifts she gave me, one of the things uh, was some highlighter tape that she found on Amazon. And this is even better than washi tape. I used washi tape on the line above the line I'm knitting on the chart so that I my eyes go right to where it needs to go to knit and know what comes next. But sometimes the washi tape loses all its stickiness and will fall off and sometimes it's so sticky that when you peel it off you're bringing off the paper as well and you're losing the chart. This uh, highlighter tape is translucent enough that you can actually see through it which can be handy. It's um, just the right tackiness so I'm going to see if I can find some of that for the shop. I think it's very very useful especially for those of us who want to keep an eye on the line of the chart that we're on or even the line of written instructions you know. So, yes, so that's my Star Cardi by Donna Kay, who is on Instagram, but I don't think she has any posts. Uh, She's on there as Tree of Life Knitter, but she is a well-known designer who has taught classes at various um, festivals and whatnot. So I'm very honored that she did that for me. And um, yeah, I would love to catch up with you, Donna, if you're listening. The next thing that will be on my needles after I finish the Star Cardi will be... Rosamund by Marie Wallen. This is something that I've started already. This is knitted in Rowan Felted Tweed DK and is a gorgeous cabled sweater. Well, it's actually a ribbed sweater all over ribbing with quite an elaborate cable motif going up the front. And it's not elaborate. There's just a lot of it, let's say. Uh, This is knitted in pieces. I've knitted up the back and I'm just at the um, armhole shaping now. And then I need to knit the front. That is starting to call to me again. I put that aside quite a while ago because I just kind of had enough of it. But it's calling to me again. And I would like to have that finished for Edinburgh as well. So that would be great. Those I'd be very happy if I had those two cardigans. Two sweaters, rather. One sweater, one cardigan. So that's what's on the needles right now. And uh, up next, well, I'm sure I'm going to be knitting mittens really, really soon. But before I talk about mittens, I wanted to talk about Remembrance Pottery, Natalie, who designed the Midnight Snow Socks. I want to catch these on so bad. And I know that she's doing a knit along right now. So if you go to her Instagram, Remembrance Pottery. Now, this is Natalie who makes those gorgeous pottery mugs. I once had the honor of um, selling them in the shop. And I hope that I do get to do that again another time. Anyway, she has designed these Midnight Snow Socks, which are colorwork socks with a little cottage on the front and starry snowflakes falling and they're just lovely. A very, a very nice picture seen on, on the socks. I went to knit mine in uh, Rauma Gamma Celery. <laughs> it's not Gamma Celery. <laughs> Gamma Celery. Right. It's not celery. Good. Celery juice on the mind because um, I follow this guy and he's really pushing celery juice right now on Instagram. I hate celery, but I really want to try drinking celery juice because I think it'll fix all my problems. But anyway, I digress. So Gamel Suri is a Rama yarn that is a two-ply. So it's slightly thinner to the touch than their fennel garn, which is their fingering weight. But it's actually got, it's got less yardage per weight than the fingering, than the fennel garn. Interesting, isn't it? I think it's got something to do with grist. But anyway, I have some of that yarn in stock uh, because that's what's used for the Trondheim mittens by Pia Camabornia. And you guys are, are enjoying that pattern and buying that yarn for it. But I would like to get more of that yarn in. And in fact, I think I'm going to get all of their uh, colors in. You know, they don't have a huge selection of colors. It's a much smaller palette 
which is why I don't mind getting all of them in all at once. So I think I'm going to do that. Uh, and maybe I'll have them coming in round about the time this gets published. So that um, I want to knit these socks in that. Now it's only a two ply yarn, but from what I hear, this yarn is good for mittens and socks and all things hardy. It's 100% wool, but it is um, a higher twist and is meant for, for socks. So I'm gonna give that a go and I'll let you know how I get on with that. So before I start telling you about um, what else I'm dreaming of knitting, because they do fall into the mittens category. Let's talk about Cal News. Uh, we just uh, recently closed up our Ido Shawl Cal, which finished at the end of December. And I hope you enjoyed that and your Plotolope experience. It was a lovely Cal, very low key, very relaxed, just what we all need in December. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed knitting with Plotolope. Uh, the next cowl that I'll be hosting is the Woolly Thistles Colorwork Mitten Cowl. And uh, this is the one formerly known as New Hampshire Knits Mitten Cowl. Uh, this will be its fourth year, which I'm just really proud about. This is a great cowl. This was the first and only cowl I ran for quite a while. And uh, every year we have uh, lots of people coming back to knit with us, as well as designers coming back to offer up designs and pattern prices. So the dates I'm announcing are, uh, let's see, February 22nd until April 5th, and that's a six week window starting on Friday, February 22nd. So that'll be good. I'm reaching out to the designers now. So if you know of any designers you want included in this who have some color work mitten patterns that we can knit, then please uh, send me an email and let me know their names so that I can uh, contact them on Ravelry. There will be discounts and there will be prizes and I will work out what the grand prize is going to be as well. And I'm going to try and create mitten kits for you so that, you know, from the designers that are participating, we can maybe get some kits together so that it's easy for you to just get your kit and get knitting. So stay tuned for more news on that. We will start talking about that on Instagram as well. And um, I will send out something in the newsletter. Let's talk about the newsletter and email right now. I'm having a horrible time with my email and it's all to do with the newsletter integration. And I know that many of you, and I really want to thank those of you who've gotten in touch about this because without hearing from you, I wouldn't know. But many of you are being spammed by my newsletter. So it's going straight to your spam folder. And also, if you open that email, some of you are getting really scary warnings. Please, first of all, be told that they're just warnings. Nothing terrible is going to happen because you opened your email. And they are very scary looking warnings. I am working behind the scenes and trying to resolve whatever their problem is. I thought we'd gotten to the bottom of it and I sent out a newsletter and sure enough, the same thing happened again. So bear with me while I work on it. But that has inevitably brought in my whole email system into question as well. And so we're digging through that. The best way to reach me if you want to send an email right now would be thewoollythistle at gmail.com. That's my very basic email. And I get those. I should be getting any other emails you're sending me to, but to be sure, thewoollythistle at gmail.com until I get to the bottom of this, which we are working hard to do. What a pain in the neck though, really. I mean, talk about technology being fantastic until it's not. Anyway, so I'm not going to send out a newsletter until I'm happy that things are okay again. So until then, just rely on Instagram, emailing me and Ravelry to a lesser extent. So let's see. Oh, so what will I be knitting? I don't know. I really want to knit the underwing mittens by Erica Hoosier, and lots of people have knit that already. They're just so appealing though. They're just lovely. So I wouldn't mind knitting a pair of those. And you'll remember that our uh, mitten cowl lets you knit any weight of yarn. And you know, the bigger the weight of yarn, the more you have to knit. Like you wouldn't knit fingerless mittens out of Aran weight and call that an entry. <laughs> But if you're knitting fingering weight, you can knit fingerless mittens. So the underwing mitts will qualify for that. 
Pia Camabornia's Trondheim mittens are lovely too, and I would love to uh, knit a pair of those. So those are probably my two, or maybe her Wisby, Visby mittens, which are knitted in Old Centrum. Those are really lovely too. So yeah, I have a lot to narrow down. But uh, have you noticed, do you watch Camabornia? Uh, the Woolly Thistle is now a proud sponsor of their show, which I think they do such a lovely job with my little segment there. I really appreciate the work they put into their podcast. Uh, the Woolly Thistle is now proudly sponsoring uh, Camabornia's podcast. I don't know if you've noticed that, but I'm really happy to be sponsoring their show and it's a good fit. A lot of the yarns I sell are the yarns uh, Pia knits with anyway and Dennis. So they've done a lovely job with my little segment on their show and I really appreciate it. So thank you so much Pia and Dennis for letting me sponsor your show. So now it's time for the Woolly Thistle update. The Woolly Thistle is doing great and as always I truly appreciate you shopping with me and telling your friends about the shop as well as sharing Instagram uh, on Instagram when your purchases arrive. This all helps so much to get the word out and helps me continue to grow the yarn offerings. We had a huge move this month like I told you and so let me talk about the Woolly Thistle and why it's not a brick and mortar retail store. Um, when I started the Woolly Thistle two and a half years ago, almost-ish, I started out with two Rubbermaid tote bins and I put a couple of things up on Etsy and they sold, so I bought some more and then I quickly went over to my own um, website, thewoollythistle.com, so that I just didn't feel like on Etsy, I, w I wasn't selling the things that I had made. So while I was allowed to sell other people's yarn on there, it didn't feel right to me to do that. So I went over to thewoollythistle.com and thankfully people found me there. And so, you know, when I sold a ball of yarn, I would make sure I bought two balls of yarn in the next time. And so that's how the Woolly Thistle has grown. Uh, it's grown in response to you shopping with me and uh, buying the yarn that I offer. And I've quickly outgrown my house, like I was saying. The main problem with working out of my home, though, was that, you know, local ordinances don't allow me to have employees. So I really couldn't have anybody here helping me on any sort of permanent basis. Um, so that's why I started looking elsewhere. And it's really hard to find the perfect spot and I'm not ready. I don't feel ready to open up a beautiful location so that I can have that brick and mortar status. What I wanted to do was be able to have help in the shop so that I could keep the shop going and not have to do every single piece of the work myself. Um, it takes a lot of work to do what I'm doing. It really is quite a lot of work and I work all the time. And then to turn around and have to um, do all the packing of orders is just not feasible. So I needed help. So that was my main priority at this time was to get myself in a space that I could have some employees help me run the business so that I can then focus on growing the shop. So yes, uh, down the road, I don't see why I wouldn't have a brick and mortar store for you guys to come and visit. And I would very much love that. But now is not the time. It would be running before I could walk. And I don't want to shoot myself in the foot by trying to do too much too soon. Right now, the Woolly Thistle is able to pay for itself without me taking huge financial risk to do it. And that's the way it should be. I want to be able to sleep at night, as I'm sure you understand. So that is why I'm not ready to open up a brick and mortar store. But that's okay. I think that, you know, this shop is in response to you and it's growing at its own pace, which is a pace that I can comfortably handle. And that's what feels right. That's what feels will bring it its most success instead of me um, freaking out and uh, trying to push things on you because I've got to make money and I've got to pay the mortgage and this, that and the next. So yeah, I hope that makes some sort of sense. Now, that's not to say that I won't host events at the new location. I could do that. I thought I was going to have more space than I ended up having. <laughs> I have filled it to the gummels already. But I would like to host some kind of event every now and again uh, at the Woolly Thistle so that you can come in and at least see where it all happens. 
get your hands on the yarn a little bit. And so that is definitely in the offing. So let's get on with um, the Wooly Thistle update. Lina 7 is now in and available for pre-order. The uh, release date is February 15th, so you have plenty of time to get your order in, but make sure you do. I'm really excited about this issue. Our friend Kristen of Scandi Work has a Colorwork sweater design in there using tuku fingering, and it's beautiful. Our friend Emma of the Woolly Mammoth has her BFL Massum DK yarn featured in a pattern by Lurka of Fiber Tales podcast. She is so cute, and I'm sure she's had her baby by now. And then there's a lovely Q&A with Annie Claire, who is by Annie Claire, who recently moved to Vermont, and I hope to get together with her soon. So pre-orders are now available, so secure your copy at the Woolly Thistle. Marie Wallen's British Breed Limited Edition Yarn Gift Boxes should be here any minute. This, uh, unfortunately, is very limited in stock. I don't have many at all. They were very expensive to get here um, due to the size of the box. It was very expensive to ship. I will be taking on some of that cost of shipping them here myself. But unfortunately, I think some of it will be reflected in the price that I have to charge. But this is a beautiful gift box set. It includes one of each of the colors of the British breeds, which is 12 balls and um, four exclusive accessory patterns that so long as you get gauge, you will have enough yarn to knit all of it, and a project bag that uh, comes from a rewallin. So yes, I have been inundated with emails and messages asking, you know, if I can save one for you. I just don't have enough, and I'm not sure yet how I'm going to do this. I don't really want to put them up and have them disappear in a second flat. So I'm going to try and come up with a creative way for them to have time to be found on the website or something. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet, but I am going to find a way that hopefully if you want one, you really, really want one, you can get one and that they're not snapped up by the lucky few who happen to be first in the queue when they go live. I'll do my best, um, but those are coming. Also, more of her yarn is coming. What do you think of the British breeds? I was floored. I couldn't believe how lovely this yarn is. It really is beautiful. It's spun at John Arban and it's a blend of four breeds and it's got a gorgeous gloss, shiny quality to it while being soft. And you know the best thing about it or one of the best is when you open up that bag. Oh, the sheepy smell is just lovely, especially on the raw colorway, which is the bear yarn. Oh, it's so beautiful. So I don't even have a ball of that to call my own. What came in went out very quickly, but I do have more coming. She's completely out of the dark apple, which is the dark green. So I won't be getting that next time, but I'll have all 11 other colors. And then I think after that, we'll be waiting until May before more is milled up. Just replenished is Little Grey Sheep's Hampshire DK, which is a bouncy woolly wool that's hand dyed by Emma of the Little Grey Sheep. So get your hands on that if you'd like it. Let Lopi and Plotolopi are both in great supply. Tuku Fingering is in fairly good shape. I have another order in uh, while I'm recording this and I hope to have more after that too, but I need to wait and see when it's coming from Finland. Woolly Mammoth, her BFL Massum DK that is uh, featured in Lina 7. I have lots of that coming. I may have it already by the time you hear this. And it's in the Peony colorway, which is the color pictured in the magazine. But I'm also getting some of her four ply yarn. So we're going to have a selection of the Woolly Mammoth. The last time her yarn was here, it did really well. And I just love Emma. She's such a cute wee thing. And she does a really lovely job with her yarn and her dyeing. And she is also on a journey to make her own yarn locally from um, Northern Ireland, where she's from. And she's having it milled. And she's coming out with 100% wool sock yarn, which I hope to get my hands on too. Ewist Wool just went in. And there we have four ply as well, which I've not had before. I've got a gorgeous uh, Hebridean DK. I'll try and put that in the shop. I might have to keep that all to myself. Really deep brown, dark 
brown color, just lovely. And then I've got some Aran White in their Sith, which is a lovely middle gray color. And I thought that would be good for those of you who might want to knit up a quick weekend or, or something like that. So a lovely selection of used wool just in. Rama fennel garn is in abundant supply. Strict garn offerings are always growing. And like I mentioned, the Gamal Suri is uh, growing too. We have plenty of the Vintage Shetland Project. If you got that for your Christmas, do you like it? Isn't it the most amazing book? I hope you're enjoying it. It's, it's such a lovely book. The photos, the gallery is gorgeous. But uh, Susan's writing is so accessible and just a joy to read, don't you think? So if you are enjoying that, I'm so glad. And if you're interested in having your own copy, we have them in the shop. What else do we have going on? Knits about winter should be back in by the time you hear this. I had, uh, <laughs> had a little brain cramp. I thought I'd ordered more and couldn't understand where they'd gotten to until I discovered that I had only dreamt that I had ordered them. I hadn't actually ordered them, but they are on their way, if not here already. Kate Davis's Milaraki Heads is doing great, and I have new, new supplies of that in. Get it while you can. Oh, Centrum is gorgeous and lovely and it's doing well. This is one of Camaborneas favorite yarns, I think. So I'm selling lots of that and I do perhaps have to restock that. Uh, Mondum from Retrozaria, along with Bruska, is being replenished and it might be in the shop by the time you hear this. So yeah, I think that's it on what's happening in the yarn front. The silver forest kits that I'm trying to put together, we're still waiting for the Euglet colorway to come back in. We're waiting for the sheep to grow it, actually. It's been back stocked or back ordered uh, at Jameson and Smith. But once that 2009 colorway is back in stock, I will be making up silver forest kits. I know you really want them. And uh, as soon as I get that color, they will be available. I'm wondering if I should get more Jameson Spindrift in to do more um, kits from Marie Wallen's Shetland book. I've done kits for the Borough Cowl and the Scalloway Tam. I think I'd like to do that again or maybe do the scarf, the Fettler scarf this time or something. I'm not sure about doing kits for the sweaters though because they take different amounts. But I think for the accessories, kits would be good. So let me know if you have any thoughts on that. Uh, we still have Piri Fleur kits in stock, which is lovely. They're always popular. We have a couple of Ola sweaters and Lars Datter uh, sweaters in stock. The Feral Kip kits, I think. I've got a couple left. And I'm going to revamp the Agatha Sock kit for you. I don't have any more zippered pouches in, which is what I had with the Agatha Socks before. But I have just got lovely wee miniature totes come in that are a good size. They also have the color logo on them, which the smaller totes didn't have before. They had the black and white. So yes, I think those will be back up in the shop soon too. I think the last thing to share with you is a wee coop cast from the girls. This was from a couple of days ago when it was really cold out one morning. I went out to give them some food and check their water. So enjoy that. And um, I'm gonna let that play us out. So remember, if you go out, take your knitting. Take care until I talk to you next time. And thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye. Yeah, hi. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Get you some more food, shall I?
Here you go. girls. Hey. Okay, you got some water. I'll have to change that out later. I doubt there's any eggs yet, but we'll have a look. Oh, there is one. Thank you. It's very cold though. Thank you for listening to New Hampshire Knits. You can find the Ravelry group at NH Knits. You can find me on Ravelry as NHK Claire, on Instagram, NH underscore Knits, and you can email me at nhknits001 at gmail.com. And you can find the Woolly Thistle all over the internet at the Woolly Thistle with two L's in Woolly.